Yonder see the morning blink, The sun is up, and up must I, To wash, and dress, and eat, and drink, And look at things, and talk, and think, And work, and God knows why. That was a poem that was written by Hausman uh, some 50 years ago, but it expresses what a lot of us feel about life today. And that's what we're talking about at this time on this program each day. What is the meaning of life? Why are we here? What's the point of it all? Uh, how come we ended up in this situation on this planet? And yesterday you may remember us saying that a lot of us answer that question by saying, um, I wish I had the luxury of thinking of such a high-flown philosophical issue as why am I alive? My problem is how to stay alive. And that's the question I've been trying to answer for the past 40 years of my life. And many of us are in that position. We say, well... I don't know why I'm alive, but I know I am, and I know this world has only limited physical resources, and I'd better make sure I get my part of the pie. And so my job is to get a good education, to get a good job, uh, so that I can buy whatever food and shelter and clothing I need so that I can stay alive. And of course, we ended up yesterday's program, you remember, by summarizing the answer in this way. We said, why am I alive? I'm alive to get a good education. Why am I getting a good education? So that I can get a good job. Why do I want a good job? Not only to fulfill myself, but so that I can get enough food, shelter, and clothing to keep me alive. Why do you want to stay alive? So that I can have children. Why do you want to have children? So that they can get a good education. So that they can get a good job. So that they can have enough food and shelter to keep them alive. So that they can have children. So that they can, and so on. And of course, the sheer viciousness of the circle fills us with uh, almost a horror when we think of it. And that lies at the sense of futility. It lies at the base of the sense of futility that many of us feel in these days. And indeed, it fills many of us with that hopelessness uh, with which we get on the bus or the train each morning to go to work. We wonder why are we doing this so that we can keep ourselves on this treadmill uh, or so that we can keep our children on this treadmill. And uh, behind it all, we feel we were made for security. We do feel we were made to be safe and secure. And so we would say, well, the reason we do it is we are just driven by a need. We are like little animals. We have an instinct for self-preservation, and we can't get anywhere above that. And we know we're supposed to be higher than the animals, but... Really, we live like little animals, and we're trying to establish our own security because somehow or other, there is deep within us a strange feeling that we were made to be safe. We were made to be secure. Indeed, we might almost say there's a deeper feeling than that. There's almost a feeling that we were made to outlive this life, and yet we don't know why we have that feeling. Uh, part of the difficulty we have in conceiving of the fact that we're on a bus that is traveling towards a concrete wall that it is going to hit after 70 or 80 years of our lifetime's existence, part of the difficulty we have in conceiving of that is we have a strange other feeling inside us that makes us feel we will actually transcend that concrete wall. We have some feeling... I don't know that we'd call it eternity, but we have some feeling that we were made to live beyond the insecurity that we feel in this life. And somehow we're trying to get at that sense of security by our jobs and our food and shelter and clothing. And we're trying to raise this physical and mental and emotional and economic security to the nth degree 
somehow hoping that by that means we'll break through the roof and break into the final security that we think we were made for. But that becomes so ephemeral for so many of us that we don't go too far in that direction. But perhaps if we were asked why we are working away like little beavers to establish our security, we might, in some moments of poetic fantasy, begin to touch that kind of emphasis that maybe it is that we were made for a security that is beyond the security that we can actually establish. Because, of course, we are constantly tantalized, indeed tortured, by the thought that men and women who have done far better than we will probably ever do at establishing their own physical and economic and financial security have failed miserably. In other words, many of us who are trying to build up enough stocks and shares or enough investments or enough of a bank balance or enough equity in the house, many of us who are trying to do that are continually reminded of the fact that men and women who have done far better at this than we have ever done finally had to admit their insecurity and often died in the midst of their own insecurity. And, of course, uh, many of us can think of Hard Hughes, the millionaire billionaire in America who owned the Hard Hughes tool company and then parlayed it into what was really the most powerful armaments company uh, virtually in the world, but certainly in America. And you remember he had so many billions and millions that he uh, hardly knew uh, how much he had. And yet uh, our minds are frustrated and tantalized by the figure of that old man, old Hard Hughes, you remember in his 70s, dying in uh, the top uh, apartment of one of the big hotels in England, I believe it was, and dying, you remember, in the midst of Kleenex tissues that he surrounded himself with because he was afraid of dying from a virus, as his father had done. And he actually died, you remember, of malnutrition, a thin, emaciated old man in the midst of his bodyguards and in the midst of all his millions. He died from fear, fear that he would die if he didn't... Uh, abstain from the right foods and protect himself from the right viruses and infections. And so many of us are really haunted by that figure. And we realize that after you've done everything you can to establish physical security, finally you can't. You can't beat death. Finally it's going to get you. Finally you're going to die without any food inside you. Finally you're going to die without your money around you or without your clothes around you or your house around you, finally you realize, if I'm living in order to establish my own security, I'm living in a fool's paradise because I'm never going to finally be able to establish security completely. I'm actually finally going to be beaten by the system. And so many of us answer the question, why are we alive? We're alive to stay alive. Well, the truth is, Oh, we'll finally be beaten by that. That uh, is a course that is bound to be frustrated because sooner or later, we all die. Sooner or later, you're going to die. It doesn't matter how well you take care of yourself, uh, you're going to die. Uh, you remember, I think it was uh, one of our famous British comedians who is also a drama producer or drama director, and as a very able uh, medic in either Oxford or I think it's Cambridge, and you rem I remember uh, hearing him say, uh, why is everybody so busy uh, doing all this running and all this jogging? Uh, they are making life miserable for themselves in order to prolong the misery as long as they can. And for many of us, that's what we're doing when we answer the question, why are we alive? We're alive to stay alive, really, finally, we won't be able to do it. Finally, you won't be able to stay alive. 
finally the system will beat you. Well, why are we alive then? Perhaps you'd join me tomorrow and we will progress towards our real answer to this.